Ooh, yep. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, yeah? Uh, you don't, you don't say. Oh, oh, welcome, everybody, to Wolf Den Podcast. How you all doing? I hope you're What's good. What's up, world? What are you? What is this? I don't know. I, I, you know, ever since we started, like, <laughs> you know, do it with the podcast intro the way it is, I try to, like, have, like, this, just the surprise look. That, like, I thought that was, like, a wrestler thing. thing. It's not. It's oh. not. I was just, like. No. Just, be, just okay. I should, have done, I should have done a wrestling thing because WrestleMania is this weekend. And it is. Am I gonna watch it? Yeah. Am I gonna watch it? Probably not because WWE has been absolute trash for is, the past few months. Is anybody in the audience? Uh, this will actually be the first time people will be in the audience since the pandemic. Oh. Started. They used to. They've been doing this really cool thing actually, where they had just like big TVs in the mm-hmm. crowd and like you. Uh, you sign up to be in the audience via Zoom, basically. Oh, God. I, I did but, see the uh, cardboard cutouts. That yeah. was funny. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's just don't bother this year. It's, it's been a <laughs> bad product. I for It's been like f- maybe five years that I've never heard a wrestling fan say, that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, just uh, WWE just progressively gets worse whereas every other promotion on the planet gets better Mm -hmm. and i think it has to do with the fact that you know vince mcmahon is still in charge and he is just getting crazier by the second (laughs) how old is he so he's in his late 70s yeah they he should not be in charge anymore well the problem is you know he's going to die before he retires and he will probably die yelling at somebody that's <laughs> uh hello everybody welcome thank you for being here um will i'm mad at you you didn't compliment me on my new lens that i got oh i i am surprisingly very bad at noticing lens lenses and lens differences you know what i did i rebought the lens that you stole from me uh <laughs> I just said screw it and I bought a new one. I bought right, it you, you, the okay. same one. Uh, nice. So Merry Christmas or Happy Birthday! Yeah. Actually, you now have an eighteen to thirty-five millimeter lens <laughs> that you've been using for the past three years. Um. Anyway, uh, hi everybody. I hope you're doing well. Uh, uh we have a lot to talk about today, as always. Yes. We would like to be talking about game preservation because for some reason, yes. all these news articles, all these news sites decided this week was the week we're going to talk about why Nintendo's so bad at game preservation and we're roping Sony in there too. Well, it's Sony specifically, but uh, Nintendo is notoriously bad at it. And I, I, people, no, were ta- people were talking nobody, about it. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like everybody like forgets that Nintendo is very bad at it until you really start to think about it well but sony is sony is what really spearheaded this whole conversation i I thought it was coming up because people were mad nintendo took away a lot of stuff on march 31st there's that there's the fact that um you know they haven't really you know allowed backwards compatibility of any kind um the fact you know the fact that they they could they hunt down rom sites with you know such zealous you know <laughs> but you know it, it's mostly this was spurred on from you know of course sony announced that they were going to shut down the playstation 3 vita and psp stores uh digitally so um that but, too i forgot about yeah. that uh yeah. so there is a lot to talk about there yes. uh but it's the beginning of a new month i guess yeah <laughs> yeah well, yeah, no, because it's the first full week in April, which means it's the start of April, which means if you are subscribed to PlayStation Plus or the Xbox network, uh, that means you get free games uh, for for the month of April. And it's, uh, it's a month, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do this every month when they announce this stuff. We like to mention all of the free stuff that you can get with your subscription services to these platforms. I think yeah. that they are slowly dying 
and that soon we won't be doing this anymore. That's what I, I think. I think this is slowly dying on Microsoft's side mm -hmm. because Sony does have some decent games here. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they they may not be as high profile as in previous months, but at least you know they have some decent games. Microsoft is clearly, you know, just I don't want to say scraping the bottom of the barrel, but they are just like grabbing things left and right. Like, I'll just spoiler alert. I I can usually defend at least one or two games in the games with gold lineup. I can't do that this month. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, what do we got for PlayStation here? All right, so for PlayStation, uh, these games all go live today. So Ooh. if you have a PlayStation Plus subscription uh, from today until May 3rd, you can grab these games, starting with Oddworld Soulstorm on the PlayStation 5. This is, uh, this is the latest game in the Oddworld series, and it is debuting um, as a PS Plus game. Oh, oh, yeah. that's cool! I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's really this. They've been they've been chilling this game for a while. This was in this has yes. been in like every PlayStation showcase. Yeah, uh, and Sony has actually been doing. I've noticed a really good job of giving PlayStation Five games as part of PlayStation Plus, but also like debuting PlayStation Five games in PlayStation Plus. Like yeah. the Destruction All Stars was uh, one. Uh, Bug Snacks debuted in PlayStation Plus. That's a great. That's um, a great thing that that yeah, Sony does. Like, you finally got a system. You you need games for it. Um, you probably bought PlayStation Plus because it's just a natural thing to do. So they're just giving you brand new games to play. Um, where, and, where, whereas you know, Microsoft debuts it in Game Pass. Yes, uh, which is a whole other topic. But uh, I should note that Oddworld Soulstorm. It's only the PlayStation 5 version. So it's not the PS4 version. It's only the PlayStation 5 version. Um, so if you have a PS4 and you haven't upgraded yet, sorry. I would say <laughs> claim the game anyway so that when you eventually get a PS5, you'll have it. So this this is the game that they keep saying is uh, 3. No, 2.5D? No, 2. no, 2.9D. 2.9D. Dude, yeah. it's just a 3D side scroller. We've had 3D side scrollers for years. <laughs> it's just a 3D side scroller. Well, uh, all right. So enough talking about how good it is that it's a brand new game on PS Plus. I've never <laughs> understood the the hype for Oddworld. Me neither. Ever. Like, like I, always, I I love side scrollers. This does not look like the type of side scroller I want. It's always been the type of series that that like games media has told you is good and told you you should like it right but i've i've like playing some of them i've never found a compelling reason to like them <laughs> you know i i don't see how this is any different or unique than like a typical mario game or a typical sonic game or something along those lines i just got a notification from discord that said want a way to run audio events set up a stage what is that about okay. we need to we need to experiment with that yeah i agree i've i've this is like one of those like uh citizen kane type deals <laughs> it's like well this is what? can i say citizen kane is actually a very good movie no like i've actually allowed. seen it not i've allowed, actually dude. seen it it's i've never i've never good. seen it i can't i can't i can't comment but, but i get what you're saying you know it, Okay, I it's remember. like it's like Evangelion type type deal. <laughs> Shit doesn't will, get good till like till like halfway through the series. All right. I will never forgive G four for hyping up uh, Strangers Wrath so much. Yeah, they did. I finally played it, and it's just like, nah, bro. I've played better games than this. This is not unique. This is not. It's only unique because like the, the 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 guns are different, but. Sorry, Cat, Cat Icarus would be very mad at you. No, I can tell. He's like what, twenty five? I can take him. No, he's probably he's probably my age now. Is he? What do you mean now? What do I mean now? He's probably always been. <laughs> I thought he was significantly younger. Uh, let's see. Is there a way to tell? Look, I, I know he born looks in like nineteen ninety four. You're right. He is. A, he's a youngin. I'll kick his 
you fast <laughs> oh, I, over I, odd world I, I, I will cop to that sly cooper is very good and i know he's a fan of that so. i i will say aj showed me a video of i used to watch cat icarus all the time and then he like went away for a while and he came back yeah. recently he put up a video called i'm sorry and it's 30 minutes of him ranting about how building a pc is a nightmare <laughs> And he's a hundred percent right about everything yeah. in it. So I highly recommend that video to everybody. Um. Anyway. Anyway. Next. Ne uh, the next, next PlayStation Plus game. <laughs> All right. So for the PlayStation Four, you get Days Gone. That's cool. And Zombie Army Four: Dead War. Now Days Gone was like one of Sony's big uh single player triple a games it's the first game from ben's their ben studio in a very long time uh i know people like this game but it has a presentation problem because it looks very much like the last of us meets son of sons of anarchy yeah i don't think it ha it doesn't really look like it has an identity beyond that I i've heard great things about this game from people who played it yeah. i personally cannot play it because this guy looks exactly like someone I went to high school with. <laughs> so I can't I can't do it. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to be him. <laughs> that's my that's it. it. That's my only yeah. that's my only gripe with this game. 0 out of 10. <laughs> this guy looks like some guy I went to high school with. <laughs> uh Greg has yeah, been I playing mean, it. Our friend Lord Beard is here on Twitch. Yeah. Uh he really likes it. So I mean, look, it's if it's part of a PlayStation Plus, there's no reason not to give it a shot. Um, I think this is the perfect opportunity to do it if like you missed it because you didn't think it looked interesting. In or, the if, beginning. or if you didn't go to Bethpage High School yeah. and graduate in like 2007, <laughs> then you might you might like it. Yeah. And uh, Zom Zombie Army Four. This is part of like that weird spin-off series the sniper elite where they replace everybody with all the nazis with zombies um i don't know man this i know zombie army and sniper Elite have a really strong cult following and everything i understand like the games actually do get progressively better with each iteration um so maybe maybe you'll get a kick out of this i don't know um yeah i don't i don't know about this one yeah. other than this though solid month for playstation uh yeah, odd world was that one they've been touting for a long time it's great that it's free if you have playstation plus days gone yeah. is a you know first party game big deal yeah. so that's very very good on playstation yeah and you're saying xbox is trash this month let's see <laughs> uh yeah not great so uh okay so uh again all these games are playable on series x and s um on the xbox one for the entire month of april the first to the 30th you get uh viking wolves of midgard and from april 16th to may 15th you get truck racing championship cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> on the xbox 360 which you can play on your xbox one and series x through backwards compatibility uh april 1st to the 15th is dark void and April 16th to the 30th is Hardcore Uprising. Boo. Dark Void, it had, the only thing I know about Dark Void, I know it, it got really bad reviews when it first came out, but it had a D-Make component that came out at the same yes. time for, yes. and I played it on the DS and it was yes. awesome. It was, an, yes. it was an NES styled version of Dark yeah. Void and it was sick. So, you're you're getting the forest version, I guess. <laughs> uh, from my understanding of Dark Dark Void came out in a time when Capcom was like struggling to appeal to the West. Like that's when we got like the action oriented Resident Evil. That's when we got the weird Devil May Cry remake. Um, so Dark Void was like their attempt to make a Western style action game. And my understanding of it is the jetpack is cool, but the game is trash <laughs> like the game does not support its cool concept very well are you guys saying will's too quiet that chat give me a give me an update on that i can't go by one person i gotta go by a consensus yeah. 
Um, it looks like it would be a sick Iron Man game or a Rocketeer yeah. game. I've I've heard like there are parts that are kind of cool, but it doesn't justify the entire game. Wait, wait, what does yes mean? I forgot what I asked. <laughs> Did I ask if he's too low or if he's fine? Because I'm getting mixed mixed yeah. answers right I now. I see Will is fine. Uh, I hear Will just fine. Will sounds fine. Will fine. Will is fine. Will is fine. Testing, he's hello. Fine. I'll, I'll raise him a little bit. All right. Actually, yeah, you're at 90%. Let's bring you up to 100%. Now I'm seeing Will is low. <laughs> I think I made you too loud now. This is very fitting okay. here. 94%. Will say something? Hello. Hi. Uh, I can talk about Hardcore Uprising for a little bit, too, because I know a little cool, bit about Cool. That that's game. good. All right. All yeah, right. you should be fine now. So I Hardcore Uprising is like... Uh, it's like part of the Contra franchise. Uh, but I think this is when Contra like, started to like nosedive. Like, Contra wasn't, like, at the height of popularity when this game came out, but, like, this started its tumble downhill, like, very fast. This and, like, actually looks pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, th I think I'm thinking of the right game. That he's he, Dude, he's friggin', there's a part where he's in a box. This is Konami trying to be Konami. Yeah. It is Konami, right? Yeah, it's Konami. Yeah. Yeah. This, this looks pretty sick. It's maybe a, I'm it's, of the wrong Contra game. It's 2.9D, Will. It's revolutionary. <laughs> uh, I might be thinking of the wrong Contra then. No, no, you probably so. are thinking of the right Contra. It, yeah. I just, I, I like uh, modern games that are still 2D, not 2D. I yeah. like modern looking games that are still side scrollers. Like I thought. Mega Man 7 and Mega Man X 7 and 8 I thought those looked sick and those were you know critically panned but still I, I thought those were sick or looked sick at least um 1.9D what would 1.9D look like I don't even what is 1D a line a line yeah. is 1D <laughs> line rider there you go 1.9D wow Look at us, guys. Um, all right, so that's it. Microsoft loses, but he, we yeah. got to start talking about if they if they bring stuff to Game Pass. Yes, because that's definitely where all their focus is going. Yes, and and would you look at that? Uh, MLB the Show is coming to Game Pass. Yes. Do they mention anything else? Uh. Let me let me double check. But the big news is that MLB The Show 21, uh, the latest in the long running, previously Sony exclusive because they make the game, uh, Major League Baseball game is debuting in Xbox Game Pass on day one. It'll be available April 20th for Xbox Series X and S and Xbox One, as well as on Android phones and tablets via Xbox Cloud Gaming for Ultimate members. I I have a I have a list that just came out ten hours ago. MLB the Show is there via cloud and okay. console. Yeah. Uh, Disneyland Adventures. I think that's a connect thing. Yeah. Uh, Rush, some sort of friggin' Disney game. Uh, NHL Twenty One. That's a go. pretty big deal. Yeah. Uh, Rain on Your Parade, which looks like a fun little like cartoon game. Mm -hmm. pathway i don't know what that is grand theft auto 5 that's a big one that's a, that's a that's huge deal huge. probably the yeah. biggest game in the history of gaming is coming mm -hmm. for free to well, not for free but included in game pass yes and then zombie army dead war 4 is that the one we just talked about that's the one we just talked about yeah well look at that see well it's like the worst one that was part of playstation plus <laughs> Yeah, but still, I mean, no matter what, you have the ability to play Zombie Army uh, this month for very little money. <laughs> the, the, so this is proof that Microsoft is moving towards Game Pass. They, 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 yes. Games with Gold isn't as big of a deal to them because look at their Games with Gold offering. That was terrible. Yeah, This is fantastic, though. Getting yeah. Playing Grand Theft Auto V 
for as little as a dollar because you can get Grand Theft Auto Five alone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it came out a million years ago, but I bet you it's right. still fifty dollars. I, I bet you it still holds up too, dude. Everybody's everybody on Twitch is doing role playing in Grand Theft Auto. That's a new thing now. Yeah, they just they just live in Grand Theft Auto and do, and and uh, and pretend to be characters. On Steam, it is. Let's see. I'm a hundred years old, according to this. Um, buy Grand Theft Auto Five Premium Edition, thirty dollars. Oh, it's not bad. But then there's all these other editions that go up in price. So, I mean, still, that's a great, that's a great deal. And also, yes, yeah. the big, the big news here is MLB the Show because that's a sony made game coming yeah. to game pass i want to know the behind the scenes stuff there like what happened and why did this happen yeah. like what did they do i'm to... sure well in terms of getting the game made for another console i'm i think the major league baseball has something to do with that mm -hmm. because there hadn't been a major a multi-console major league baseball game in years uh MLB the show was it and I think Major League Baseball like basically said you got we need this on more systems we want this available to more people and Sony but, is like all right we'll keep making it yeah they they were probably like we're gonna go with somebody else to give give yeah. it to more people if you if uh and they were like all right you know we could just we could just put it on Xbox also yeah so that's fan that's awesome so, the yeah. Sony not usually like that Sony's not yeah. usually one to, to do usually that. Usually the exact opposite. <laughs> um, but between this and like their games going on <clears> PC, <throat> I think this is this is an interesting step. We could very well see like the end. I don't want to say the ends, but like console exclusive games are no longer what we thought they once were. Right. You know. Um. So anyway. Uh, Solid month all around if you include Game Pass yes. for, for all consoles. This is great. Mm -hmm. This is good for us consumers. Uh, I don't think I'll be busting out the PS5 still, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, hmm. So you don't keep these games, the Game Pass games, right? Like, if they leave Game Pass, that's it. I think so. Um, I know if you're part of Game Pass and a game leaves, you can buy it. They, like, they give you a, a discount if you want to buy it. I, so like if if GTA leaves, um, like you get like ten percent off oh, if you want to like purchase it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I I might just download Grand Theft Auto for the sake of it. That's probably a huge file though. I remember it was two discs on the original on three sixty. Mm -hmm. I remember on three sixty or PS three three sixty. Oh, so I had friends who had it on three sixty, and they said it was like two discs, and one was purely an install disc wasn't it am i thinking of something else what? wasn't it like two discs on playstation and that was a big deal and it was like a million discs on xbox i don't think there was a two disc or was that were something there two disc three ps3 games i remember la noir was four discs on 360 <laughs> and that was a big deal was that it there what there was a game that was two discs on playstation 3 and that or or no or was it Maybe, I, I'm I'm definitely getting something wrong. Maybe it was L.A. Noir and it was four discs on Xbox and one on PlayStation. Yeah, no, it was definitely like L.A. Noir had like four discs on Xbox 360, whereas on PS3 it was just one because PS3 was a Blu-ray, so it can fit more. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking. Uh, yeah, no, no, nobody can say. Nobody can name any multi-disc PS3 games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was Final Fantasy? Not Final not Fantasy unless you count games that came with a soundtrack. <laughs> I might be thinking of LA Noir or maybe Final Fantasy was one of them. That it was like four discs on Xbox and it was only one on PlayStation. Yeah, I, there were a lot of games like that. Rage was like three discs on Xbox. Uh, I'm trying to think, Mass Effect was multiple discs. 
Rage was three discs, one of them being an install. I just looked up a three disc, uh, a two disc PlayStation 3 games, and it's, it's on a forum from six years ago. As far as yeah. I know, this is the list, and there's nothing on the list. <laughs> just, just doesn't finish. Yeah. Game, Borderlands 2 Game of the Year Edition was on two discs, but I think that's because it ran out of space, but rather they were just lazy. Probably. Oh, one you disc remember, for the game, one disc for the DLC. Blu-rays were like up to 50 gigs. Yeah. So like a PS3 game, you can fit a lot for a PS3 game. Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy 13 was three discs for PlayStation 3. Really? This was the era when I worked at GameStop. So that's why, uh, you know, I saw a lot of open discs. Uh, But if, but for Xbox, I'd imagine it was a million discs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it was it was one of those situations where they just all stacked like 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 you know how like the you put the yeah, CD yeah. on the thing and the the thing in the middle was huge. Yeah. Um, no, I think it was only one disc on PS3. Three discs on 360. Oh, they're saying. Yeah. Yeah, it was only one disc on PS3. Yeah. yeah, it was one disc. Yeah. But there was a million different designs for the disc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making it very confusing. Well, anyway, let's take well while we're taking a walk back on memory lane, we should talk about what everyone's doing so wrong about games preservation recently. Yeah. But before we do that, we gotta say thank you to press 10 j for the 650 bits hey bob is spawn wave in the same cinematic universe as you shout out motorcycle man uh spawn wave is he is the uh the what would you call it the watcher or the, or the doctor strange he's like the multiverse like guy uh no nah, probably the watcher watu yeah mm -hmm. he's he's yeah, the he watches everything yeah well, I don't want to say he's like the what he's closely related to the watcher. You know, he's the one who ties the he's the one who who can who can move between all of the other characters easily. Right. Well, well, I don't know if that's a bet because the watcher, his whole, you know, gimmick is that he just watches. He doesn't get involved. That's why I'm saying it's like Doctor Strange, where he's like, right, where he, he has the ability to he can get involved. Yes, yes. Um. Anyway, G C X C Luke, thank you for the Prime subscription. Kate, thank you for the Hundo bits. Release. Uh, GameStop released some PS5 bundles today, and it was a scalper shit show as usual. And I'm sad about it. LOL. I'm shocked that it's still so hard to get a PlayStation right now. Also, uh, don't worry, you don't need one. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Apparently, that semiconductor shortage is a lot more serious than people realize and we might be suffering through playstation and xbox shortages for a long time that's horrible my boss did just recently get a playstation 5 speaking of playstation uh would you like a a code for uh uh a playstation 4 code for uh republic commando i was watching your video today uh oh and i saw the ad and i'm why, thinking why are you and mad? i said I said to myself, A, this son of a bitch didn't tell me he was doing an ad for Republic Commando. B, this son of a bitch better have gotten me a code for something. I swear to God. Yes, I would love a code for Republic Commando. Thank so, you. So here's what happened with this, okay? I yeah. was this was supposed to be a Skillshare ad. Skillshare okay. just just left the office. <laughs> they just left. They they, they were just go they just ghosted me. So, so uh, last night I finished the Republic Commando ad. That wasn't supposed to go up till Friday, but they right. this morning almost immediately approved it. So I was like, all right, I guess wow. this is. So I didn't really know I was doing a Republic a Commando ad until very recently. Yeah. Um, and let me tell you, I was playing Republic Commando for for footage, and that game fucking rules. 
<laughs> I've never I never played it. I always wanted to play yeah. it because at the time that it came out, it only came out on Xbox, but I was really interested i loved tactical shooters and i loved the star yeah. wars games at that time but we never had an xbox so i never got to play it but I that game rules <laughs> i don't i think we have it for original xbox now i think i i, I but, uh, there was a point in, i worked at gamestop when they were getting rid of xbox games yeah. so i used to just take xbox games that i yeah. <laughs> that i wanted and that was probably one of them and i and i want to say it was also like a backwards compat like on games with gold one month and i might have claimed it but you know i'll, I'll take a ps4 copy yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> almost positive it was uh it was on games with gold yeah but no that game freaking rules uh, if you if you didn't play games back in 2005 you might think that it didn't age well but yeah. uh but I, I i it's sick apparently it's really short oh that's good yeah it's good for us yeah. and it's only 15 dollars yeah don't forget i was paid by them so right <laughs> well, but I, mean, I genuinely think it's freaking awesome that's good to hear because i actually decided this week i'm gonna stop playing star wars squadrons because <laughs> i'm just not having fun with it so but it'd be nice to play a star wars game that sounds a lot of fun uh where would i leave off trep thank you for the seven months hi boys hello Press 10J, thank you for the subscription. And Van Vizzle, thank you for the three months. Am I cool yet? No, you got to work a little harder. Yeah. Keep trying, though. Do You're more, almost there. Do more sit-ups. Get abs, and then you'll be cool. <laughs> um, all right. So there you go. There's a company that's doing great with games preservation. Aspire, because they they've yes. been they were bringing uh, the, the, the Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy, and now Republic Commando to the They're Switch and PlayStation Four. Episode Episode One Racer in the works. Um, yes. Oh, I think that's out already. Uh, and uh, allegedly they're working on Kotor One and Two. Uh, are they doing Star Green Wars, the mobile game thing, like Heroes or something? I don't know. I'd have to I have to look at that. I know Aspire used to be like a Mac port house, like they would port games to Mac, but recently they've oh. just been like porting Star Wars games to like everything. <laughs> so That's, we need people like that. Yeah. It's great. Um So yeah, what started this whole talk about games preservation? I so thought it was really, I thought it was Nintendo uh dropping everything on March. Well, 31st. I, I think it was a, a one two punch because Yes, it was that, but we had known they were going to do that for a while. Right. And I think just once uh, the date hit, it became real for people. But I think what really kicked it off was when, uh, well, first it was a net, first it was rumor and then it was confirmed that Sony was going to shut down the PlayStation 3, PSP, and PS Vita stores. So after a certain date, you cannot buy. Um, PSP, PS Vita, and PS3 games digitally. Um, and I, we we talked about it a little bit, but you know, after we after our initial discussions, like actual games journalists did the numbers, <laughs> and something like two thousand games will just become unavailable to people when those shores uh, shut down. Two thousand games that you know you have no other way to purchase them unless you had already bought them before the shutdown that's that's a lot <laughs> that's a yeah. lot and that's great to think of uh the fact that they're like i can't really think of ones off the top of my head but you know the fact that you just can't go and play some of these games is mind-boggling so so so, so on xbox were you able to download games on the original xbox no right I don't think so. I think you might have been able to download like you know tiny ass arcade games. So like that's a, started a version on, of Pac Man or whatever. That started on 360 then. That really kicked in the gear on 360. Yeah, with the Xbox Live Arcade, they called it. Yes. Um, yes. That, I mean, that's obviously still available, right? You can still do that. Because yeah, the, as far as I know, the 360 store is still up and running. If you only have a 360, you can hook it up to the internet. You can download games for it. You can buy games for but, it. But um, but and so, so like I I don't yes continue you I'm can sorry. get some of those games are available on your current Xbox be it Xbox One or Series X so that's what they're doing right is that yes there's no reason not to be able to play those games on the new stuff that you don't need mm -hmm. the old console you can just you can just you just download it on your new stuff it's freaking awesome yes. um 
I don't fault like I we saw this sort of situation coming. Like PlayStation Three is pretty old by now. Um, yeah. I don't expect anybody to have to hold on to their PlayStation Three, you know, to to yeah. play these old games. But you should be able to just freaking download them on your new console. I don't know why yeah. that's so. Hard. I mean, like. I understand that the PlayStation 3 architecture is wildly different than the PlayStation 5 architecture. However, the PlayStation 5 is so goddamn powerful. Why can't it do the yeah. overhaul of emulating PlayStation 3 stuff? Yeah, and I, you would think Sony, because it's their architecture, they would know how to emulate their own software, their own hardware better than anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, or even the fact that like you can stream playstation 3 games through playstation now the fact but like you can't insert a ps3 disc and your ps5 can't recognize it and pull the game from ps now yeah that's playstation now is a, a travesty also yeah um they're trying lord knows they're trying <laughs> xbox 360 architecture is also wildly different than xbox series architecture yes uh but it's Microsoft. They but know what they're doing. They found a way to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is commendable. And, you know, the fact that they've been, they've kept it going for as long as they have. Uh, and, you know, not to jump ahead, but now they're also bringing original Xbox and 360 games to xCloud. Yeah. So, and you can play these games on your phone or well, your tablet or whatever. Is it xCloud or is it Game Pass? Because X Cloud, X Cloud is weird. Yeah, it's specifically the cloud. Okay, because I I don't know what it's called anymore. Because they stopped calling it X Cloud, but it's like I, part I, of Game Pass. It's it's called cloud gaming, Xbox right. Cloud Gaming, which it's such a boring <laughs> ass name. So if I have Game Pass. Can I play all of these original Xbox games? Uh, or do I have to? It, do I have well, to? Remember, do cloud gaming is only part of Game Pass Ultimate. So if you have Game Pass right. Ultimate, then yes, you can play uh, games like Fable Two, um, the Gears of War series, uh, Perfect Dark, Elder Scrolls Four, uh, the Banjo Kazooie remaster. Ooh. You know, you have the ability to play these games. You know what sucks? I have all of... The, I have so many resources to play all of these amazing games. Mm -hmm. And zero time to do so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's horrible. It's a horrible conundrum for me. Because yeah. it's my goddamn job to play games like that. And I just... It's, it's, I just can't. I'm doomed to only speak about them and never play them. Yeah. Um, the app is called Game Pass, but they use cloud gaming to differentiate. I guess the cloud stuff says Kyle Belmont. Yeah. Kyle Belmont, the uh, the the third Belmont brother who just like does their taxes <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, so Nintendo on the other hand, uh, not much better. <laughs> no. Uh. No, <laughs> they um, they they're really they're really very bad at you know having their classic game. Nintendo's whole identity is based on its classic games, right? Um, but many of them they just they don't bother like bringing back or re-releasing or having some way for you to play them outside of you know the original system it launched on. Like a lot of its famous franchises, F Zero just doesn't exist anymore basically uh kid icarus doesn't really exist anymore uh you know metroid might as well not exist you're talking about the Earth franchise Bounds. that like new series new games in the franchise not not even that like have trying to get access to the original games like i don't think earthbound is on switch online yet right and that's insane to me because uh... that is is it I think it is. Uh, Super Mario RPG is not. No. That's one of well, the that, that's that... A, that's an even better example then. I remember... I, uh, 
Because I remember there was like a couple games everyone was like, you gotta move this on Switch Online or else I'm gonna riot. And then they did. Yeah. And people were like, well, you, we still don't have Super Mario RPG. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I think the biggest problem Nintendo has is that they're not doing it in a way that people want. Like, people people don't like having to have a subscription to play these old games. And, yeah. and the library, I mean, it's got some great games, but it's not enough for people. Um, I don't see Earthbound. Yeah, Earthbound is not on there. And, you know, during the Wii U era, it was a big deal that they finally put Earthbound um back in availability for people and it's included on the super nintendo classic console the mini right, console. that's what it is but it's not on switch online why i'm trying to see if i can go to the japanese it's not on the what's it's mother <laughs> right 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 no it's not on japanese version either how did you do that so fast wikipedia ah smart yeah um so yeah i i i think nintendo used to be like back in the wii day they had they they, we had the freaking virtual console and it was also virtual console yeah and they they had you know the the ability to you know bring back and re-release a lot of classic games yeah you had to buy them again but at least they were available you had a, a new uh easy and you know relatively inexpensive way to go back and play a play these games and b experience games that you may have missed the first time you know there it is yeah well it's not update day yet though no (laughs) super mario rpg sonic the hedgehog donkey kong 3 adventures of lolo one and two king's night dig dug chu man foo Harvest Moon, <laughs> League Puzzle Pokemon, Toe Jam and Early in Panic on Funko Tron. Sing it with me if you know the lyrics. Castlevania, Fatal Fury, Ninja, Jaja, Maru, Connect, Razor Blazing, Laser Bases, Loaded, Mega, Tarun, Con, Cybernator, Rolling Thunder, Dynastic Hero, Bubble, Bobble, Double, Dribble, Double, Dragon, F Zero, F Zero X. And Don Kong Jr. Math! Ninja Gaiden 1, Ninja Gaiden 2, Ninja Gaiden 3. Cruising USA! Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks classic, so much. Classic, classic, classic. Um, can you do that with <laughs> the Nintendo Switch? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Nope. Uh. Bob, how much time did you spend so, learning this song? Uh, a night. It was stuck. The song gets stuck in my head every Wednesday because they post that. Uh, there's that Twitter account that posts the song yeah. every Wednesday. Um, so I was like, "Screw it! I got to learn the lyrics. Maybe it'll help get out of my head." It didn't. It's only ingrained in there now. Um. Anyway, that's from the show Nirvana, the band of the show. Good luck Googling that. Um, so, uh, so here we got a Nintendo life wrote an article about, um, Nintendo and the industry needs to get serious about game preservation. Now games preservationist Luigi blood on Twitter took some problems with, uh, with this article famously we we know nintendo to be pretty bad with games preservation because they're yeah. not doing they're not letting us have games the way that we want there's a lot of games that i think the problem is nintendo is such a classic uh company they have such a great old library and yeah. a lot of it is put in a vault somewhere yeah and that's we can we do have access to a lot of great old nintendo games uh, but there's so much more that we don't have access to. Yeah, I, I think when we speak of game preservation, we what we're talking about is allowing classic games to be available to play today in the modern era in a quick, easy, and convenient uh, method. Mm-hmm. A lot of games, the only way to play them is to punt down the original system and an original 
physical copy of that game. And that is not an easy thing to do. Physical games are becoming harder and harder to find. Classic consoles are becoming harder and harder to connect to modern televisions. And, so, and, and right now, apparently, I haven't seen any like numbers, but actually, we have an article about it later. Uh, retro, the retro games market has hit a real boom lately. Yeah, like a lot of old game. My dumb, stupid friend Jerry texted me. It was like, <laughs> buy all the old games that you want. The market's really big. And it's like, what do you think yeah. I've been doing my whole <laughs> life? What do you think I go? He used to come with me to game stores. I don't know why he yeah. thinks that I don't have every game that I've been <laughs> wanting. Anyway. Um, yes. So it is really hard to to get physical version and play them. Nintendo used to be really good at, um, at uh, backwards compatibility. They used to lead yeah. the way in backwards compatibility. They, they used to be pretty good at it, yeah. Uh, it was particularly with handhelds, not really so much for their for their yeah. main consoles. The systems, that, yeah, they like dropped the ball here and there. But yeah, uh, their handhelds, they always had some form of backwards compatibility. Um, apparently the 3DS has Game Boy hardware in it. So like it could natively play Game Boy Advance games. Even oh. though it does, there's no port for it interesting yeah um so anyway uh we there's there's we have some issues with the way nintendo handles game preservation uh, and and there's like the old rumor that uh I don't, I don't know how much i think it's just more nuanced than than we say it is but there's that whole thing where nintendo like had a a, a rom of like 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 a downloaded rom of the original super mario brothers yeah and they they published that instead of and and everybody was saying they're they're so bad at preservation that they don't even have their own version of super mario brothers yeah. like on a file somewhere but luigi blood takes issue with some stuff nintendo life said it says as the example of super mario brothers on wii virtual console highlighted ugh so i have to explain this again <laughs> So here we go. Nintendo mm -hmm. hired a contributor who worked on sound emulation for iNES in the late 90s. Uh, Tomohiro Kawase, a.k.a. Kawasedo, was responsible for the NES emulator in Animal Crossing on N64 and GameCube Network, GCN. Uh, the, the official truncated abbreviation of GameCube is GCN. GameCube Game. Nintendo. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's Japanese, probably. Yeah. Um, Animal Crossing already included NES ROMs with the iNES header, except it also had FDS dumps. You follow it along? Which are, yep. oddly enough, not in the public .fds format as we know it. I think this is a case of the developer just using standards that were considered good enough for the time. And the Giga Leaks only proves that Nintendo is probably the Japanese game company that does the most work on archival. That's an interesting take on this whole thing. Yes. Um, remind... Uh, I screwed everything up. Reminder that uh, last year we have literally master files of NES and Game Boy and Game Boy Color games uh, and master FDS dumps, which the Zelda master couldn't couldn't be which the Zelda master couldn't be dumped properly and had to be done through the disc writer cartridge in 2016 by Kawasato himself for the 30th Zelda one anniversary for the 30th anniversary of the original zelda those master nes files do not have the i nes header and are separate prg and chr files and we also have tools leaked that are specifically aimed for making i nes and t nes 3ds rom files so i guess t nes is the is the header that runs on the 3ds yeah so he's saying the remember the giga leaks that happened last year there was so yes. much old stuff that came out of nintendo he's yeah. saying because of those leaks we know that nintendo has a lot of their old stuff preserved yeah 
Um, Which, I mean, he's got a point. Yes. Uh, it would make sense that Nintendo has, like, just, you know, this big archive of their stuff hidden somewhere. My point, as I tried to say earlier, it's it's less about, like, preserving it and more about making this stuff available to the public. Right. Because there's a, there's a lot of games that Nintendo has released in the past, a lot of great games, a lot of classic games that are just unavailable right now. Actually, he goes on to say, oh, there's two howevers here. However, sometimes there are slip-ups, and I think it's just because of timing and logistics. I heard on NES, NSO, Nintendo Switch Online, there was a bad dump of Yoshi on NES. It got replaced with the proper master in a later update. It just might be because they were pressed in time. And then he says, however, archival is one thing, but barely anything gets to be accessible and playable to the public. There's still a huge point to be made here, of course. I still am very much angry at Nintendo for not doing enough. I'm also very angry about remakes as a whole being more of a thing and essentially preventing the originals to be accessible. In some cases, I wish emulation was chosen over ports even. Um, so there you go. He's he's ba- he's saying what you just said. Uh, yeah. Archival isn't even the the... Well, I mean, what good is archival if it's not accessible? Yeah, if, it, if there's no availability, to is the public. is that really preservation? If you if you're if you're holding it all in a vault somewhere that nobody could access, no. If a tree falls in the woods, yeah, does it make a sound? Yeah, I mean, what's to say? Like, yeah, Nintendo has all this stuff archived, but you know that that doesn't mean people are going to get access. If people want to you know, play these games later, study these games later, learn from these games later, you know, and they, the only way to do that is to go to Nintendo and ask for permission. They'll say no. PDS619 in the chat says, was it true or false that Nintendo was downloading their own games from emulator sites, which they later had shut down? So uh, that's what, that's a much simpler version of what Luigi Blood was trying to say. Um, yeah, he was. It's a lot more nuanced than that because people have been saying for a long time that Nintendo has has used ROMs that they've downloaded off of ROM sites for stuff yeah. like the original Super Mario Brothers. The reason people thought that was because there was, if you look at the the source code or the file or whatever, there was a header that was used in emulators. So there, that was the evidence that Nintendo used stuff that they downloaded. But as Luigi Blood is saying. A guy who worked on those emulators also worked on the Nintendo official stuff. So it's just, he just, it's possible he just, that's just what he did. You know, it it doesn't mean that they downloaded this stuff off of ROM sites. Which wouldn't be uh, that weird though. Like there's other cases where big professional distributors would download uh, yeah. uh, pirated versions just because it's the easiest way to go. There, were, there was a famous case a while back. Uh, one of the Assassin's Creed games, like the Deluxe Edition came with like a digital copy of the game soundtrack. And in the folder, there was the text file from the Pirate Bay download. And it said <laughs> like, it had like that information in there. Yeah, so it, it I mean they're entitled to it it's their freaking game like right would it, would but you really would think bad? they would be a little yeah. bit more professional than that <laughs> true true and i mean nintendo they're they have a lot of polish they're, they're they they yeah. try really hard to make sure that you are getting the best version of the game every time you get it so yeah. uh they are doing a lot of work they are doing a lot of work for that stuff but that's part of the yeah. problem is that they have to put in all of that work so we lose out on all of this stuff that would be just so easy to port yeah. like it would be so easy to just put earthbound on there but they got to do it the way they right. got to do it we're going to end up right. with freaking uh another uh fire emblem situation where we can only ha- get it for like two months yeah but like at the same time they've put earthbound on two different systems already they even went ahead and they put the first earthbound earthbound beginnings or mother one on the wii u they have they have it available and the fact that it currently isn't available sucks it just sucks Mm -hmm. and there's no clear reason for it 
Sushi Dushi in the chat says, 3D All-Stars is probably Nintendo at the bare minimum of effort for porting. I don't know about that. But, like, I, I think that they wanted to do a lot more work and they just didn't because they didn't, they, you know, they're, the pandemic happened. Um, yeah. But I think that they did a lot of great work with the emulation that they did. And, and, and we won't know for sure until they start putting other GameCube or N64 games on yeah, the Switch. We, we don't know what the fruits of this experiment were. For yeah. all we know, this was like, this was just a way to celebrate Mario's 30th anniversary in a quick and easy way. I, I think people are really, uh, they're really like missing the point when they say uh, they used an emulator. Yeah. Ew. Like, who cares? You're playing the game. Yeah. It runs exactly as good as it would have without an emulator. What's the problem? Yeah. And Luigi Blood here says, uh, he said, sometimes I wish they would just emulate it instead of doing straight ports. And uh, hopefully Nintendo takes this and uses this the emulation technology that they built for other stuff. Yeah. That would be great. Um, but we don't know. Right, they haven't done shit so far. They've just yeah. done 3D World. I'm hoping this year, it, come September, we get more Nintendo Switch Online, maybe yeah. Game Boy stuff, maybe some piecemeal uh, and N64 stuff. N64, yeah. N64 is incredibly hard to emulate. Right. Uh, yeah. So, or if, like, because I'll, I'll never forget because this made me feel like such an old bastard. But there was a tweet that I saw. It said what you thought was 20 years ago, and it's a picture of an NES, <laughs> and what was actually 20 years ago, and it's a picture of a GameCube. Yes. So that means that when when the Wii came out, the, the NES was like over 20 years old, and they had NES games available. GameCube is now currently 20 years old, and there is no way to play GameCube games on the Switch aside from uh, 3D All-Stars, the one GameCube game. Yeah. GameCube isn't as hard to emulate, I don't think. No. Um, N64, they would have to go on a game-by-game -game basis and tweak right. the Which is what the they emulator. did on Virtual Console. Yeah. Right. That's Which true. is fine they, if that's they what they did have do to it do. On virtual console. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why is N64 so hard to emulate? It was. Uh, it's the first 3D console, so they didn't... It, it's not... It was kind of so hacked together. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it was the way the, ar like, the system architecture was set up pretty much every game made for the N64 used that system architecture differently. Mm -hmm. So no, no game has, has like no two games have like the same standard of performance on the N64. Also it's uh it's, it's a cartridge, which uh, every other company was moving towards discs. Yeah. So they just like on the SNES, they were able to put, technology in each cartridge that mm. differed from uh from game to game so uh every game runs differently and it's a yeah. pain in the ass to to, yeah. to run it and they didn't run uh, that great on the n64 either yeah they ran sub 30 frames per second there's i think there's like two games that ran 60 frames if you were lucky yeah um so yeah, it was it was a it 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 was a it's so it's a really hard game to emulate because it, every game used the architecture differently, but also because yeah. the games didn't run that good anyway. <laughs> so, uh, Ren of Blades in the chat says Ikaruga was on the GameCube and is available on the Switch. Um, yes, um, same thing with like Resident Evil Four, uh, Jedi Knight Two, Jedi Outcast was on the GameCube and that's now on Switch. But those are not made by Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Those are third party games. We're specifically talking about Met Metroid Prime. Um I, I think the, Darkness, the point he's trying to make uh, is that Zero GX. I think the point he's trying to make that is that it's possible and there's no excuse for not doing it. That yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Like it like Eternal Darkness is one of the best GameCube games ever made. It's it's a Everybody who played it loved it. It's a great game. The only way to play that is on a GameCube. And it's very difficult to find. 
Um, is there anything from this Kotaku article that we should read? Because we we pretty much talked a lot about games preservation <laughs> without even it reading go, anything. It goes into it talks about how like Sony used to be like great at this because the the one of the big selling points of the PS2, in addition to being a DVD player, you could play all your PlayStation One games. Like no questions asked, it just worked. And then yeah. when the PlayStation Three came out, it could play. All of it, PS1, PS2, and then PS3 games. Then later revisions of the PS3 removed PS2 compatibility, but kept PS1 compatibility for some reason. So, so that that was because they had a whole PS2 shoved into the PlayStation 3 and yes. it made it very expensive. Yes. So th- yes. there, I completely understand their reasoning for removing well, that. That's not entirely true because later revisions of you know the com- the PS2 backwards compatible PS3s were software emulation. They figured out a way to do software emulation PS for PS2, um, but apparently that still made the console very expensive, so they just removed it completely. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when you got to PS4, they dropped backwards compatibility completely, but they didn't just drop it. Digital PS1 games that you could buy on your PS3 were never made available on PS4. That's... Ever. And that's carried over now to PS5. So, so the excuse there is that PlayStation 3 architecture was so vastly different than PlayStation 4 architecture. Right. And I don't think the PlayStation 4 was powerful enough to emulate that stuff. Um, but uh, I don't have a but. I don't have a but. Uh, I have a but. <laughs> I, have a, I have one. Okay, so PS4 wasn't powerful enough to emulate ps1 games when no, the no, psp no, no, no. and the ps3 do it ps3 ps3 couldn't emulate ps1 games no ps4 couldn't emulate ps3 games i'm not talking about ps3 games i'm talking about the ps1 games that you can get oh that's there's PS3. absolutely no excuse for that yeah and it's, absolutely it's no still still unavailable on ps5 so like yeah. the misadventures of tron bond is going to disappear again yeah, that's a game. That's another thing. Games like that, million dollars. You can't just go yeah. out and buy Misadventures yeah. of Tron Bond. I would love yeah. to be able to just buy that digitally. I think it's on PSP. I think you can download it on Well, actually, no, you can't anymore. You can't friggin' buy well, it. Well, you, you still have time. You still have time. So hurry up and get your ass in gear because it's think only you 10 can, bucks on PS3. I think you could get it for... Actually, no. It, it would probably be the PS1 version for Vita. Yeah. But it's better than not having Tron Bond. <laughs> and that's... But the problem is... Are you trying to look for it now in the PlayStation Store? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, fuck you, because you can't do it from the computer anymore. You, can only, you it, can only buy PS3 games and Vita games from the system itself. It, yeah, and it, pretty soon, you're not going to be able to anymore. It's not. It's not on here at all. Yeah. yeah. If just... you want to buy that, you have to boot up your PS3 and buy it that way and i have our ps3 <laughs> i would want it on vita why not i think you can get it on vita holy shit dude <laughs> it is three thousand nine hundred and ninety four dollars and eight cents buy it now and you know what that's just gonna go up once the store closes games are already going up because they know these stores are going down brand new lowest price two viewed per hour oh it's it's rated it's not it's a 9.4 still 75 dollars shipping why why (laughs) it's not big that's that's what pisses me off so much it's in a case already so that's how they like you'll you'll like search for something on ebay and you'll see like like if i'm hunting for action figures and i see one that's like oh eleven dollars oh that's half the retail price i'll go to buy it in fine print shipping forty dollars so (sighs) that's so that's what we're missing out on if you want to yeah. if you want to play the misadventures of Tron Bond, you're paying four thousand dollars, and then you also got to get a PlayStation yeah. One. Yeah. Meanwhile, Microsoft they've they've paused it since the launch of the Series X, but they have gone out of their way 
to make three six not just three sixty games available, but uh, have the DLC available for you. In a lot of cases, to have servers still up for multiplayer. Um, then they put original Xbox games available for backwards compatibility. Uh, the servers may be shut down, but there are a lot. There have been cases where you can play. They showed this with Crimson Skies. You can play Crimson Skies System Link. One person on an original Xbox, one person on a 360, one person on an Xbox One, one person on a Series X. M- Modern Vintage Gamer did that. Yes. You can play they have you have the ability to play one game across four consoles against each other. That's from the, four different generations. That's the type of nerd shit that I'm into. Yeah. Go and go that, in the extra mile to do dumb shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh of note here, uh Aspire ported Republic Commando to the Switch and the PlayStation 4 because they weren't available on those consoles. Exactly. Uh, they did not port it to xbox because you could just buy it and you've always been able to you could just buy republic commando the xbox version and just play it on your series x or wherever you want yep for ten dollars it's even cheaper than the than the ports yeah i I, and i'd assume that they added some stuff to the aspire port but uh yeah but still and i don't know if you noticed but it said for republic commando is uh 1x enhanced so they <laughs> up, they even like upgraded it so to ha- have uh better visuals and you know run in a smoother frame rate my god yeah so i mean look it's not perfect but they are they are going out of their way to trying to make it as easy as possible for you to play old games to keep your library of games and not have it just be worthless you know and that's commendable it really is xbox live local multiplayer and local co-op what does live local mean does that mean you can i could it'll it'll split screen but we'll still be over the internet is that what that means i might like i'm basically remoting into your xbox to play it with you because system link is when you hook up all your systems together in a right. LAN. Yeah. Oh, I can click on it. Oh, no, it just goes to a list. Yeah. Anyway, that's what we're trying to say. Microsoft's doing a great yeah. job of, of, of making all of their old stuff available and keeping it available. And, I mean, yeah. obviously it's not perfect, but uh, no. it's the best out of anybody else and they're doing a great job yeah um and of course microsoft's had their hiccups too they uh yeah. they tried to r- drastically raise the price of xbox live a few weeks ago yeah um uh, the launch of the xbox one was was a travesty or the announcement of the xbox one the was a travesty. yeah and then uh f- that was funny because that famous one of the when they asked about backwards compatibility on the Xbox One, uh, the head of Xbox at the time, Don Matrix, said, if you want that, then you're backwards. <laughs> and there was also the whole thing where you couldn't even just give somebody a game. Yeah. For, for uh, Xbox One, because it yeah. was going to have uh, its own version of DRM. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. and play- That's why PlayStation uh, kind of wiped the floor with them that generation. Yeah. Um. But now, I mean, now it looks like, I mean, Sony is clearly like they're selling a lot. It looks like they're selling a lot more PS5s than Xbox is selling Series X and S's, which is what it is. But I have not seen anybody say anything particularly good about the PlayStation 5. (laughs) Because there's, there's always been some sort of like problem with like setting games up or their version of backwards compatibility or transferring saves over or things like that. It's ju- whereas it's, Series X just works. It's ju- The PlayStation 5 is just not better than the Series X. It's just <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Not even a little. The only reason I, I recommend it is because it has uh, more exclusive games that people would want to play. Uh, but Eventually, though. <laughs> eventually i think yeah i think the xbox is a great eventually, 
yeah. I, th- I think people are sleeping on the series x i think it's yeah. i think it's the better console overall the only difference is uh this the the playstation 5 has like uh, the, the it's got some first party games that you're probably going to be interested in that's really it yeah and of the first party games like it launched with two uh miles morales and Do- demon souls um miles morales you can get on your ps4 right and demon souls well that's a ps3 game and that's shutting down <laughs> soon so you might have to strip up on that but game pass is the big all of these the fact that you could just buy republic commando is reason enough to get a freaking xbox series x <laughs> but um the, the game pass is 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 i think the biggest selling point for that and also yeah. you could just get a series s it's significantly go. cheaper and it's the yes. game pass machine yes so you get most of you people don't even have uh you don't need 4k tvs you know yeah 1440p should be just fine for a lot of you it's fine i don't even pl- I, I have both of these consoles right here i got i got the x and the and the <laughs> and the ps5 and guess what? I play them both in 1080p because that's the only way I can capture it. So I don't even use the 4K capabilities. Yeah. All right. Let's stop talking about game preservation. Yeah. And let's thank our subscribers. Thank you, Joey Garbanzo Beans, for 14 months. <laughs> I think that's my favorite name. Uh, yeah. Chris BX, thank you for the 33 months. Hope you guys are having a good night. I am having a good night. I hope you're having a good night. Yeah, not a, not a bad night, must say. It's a pretty good night. I'm glad I was able to post my video today. That's all I got. Yeah. I haven't even <laughs> seen how it's. I posted it and went to sleep. <laughs> there you go. No, I posted it. Had I went to my Japanese class, then I went to sleep. Um, Fred, thank you for gifting a sub. The Sammy's sprinkles. Thank you, Fred. And Daybreak, thank you for the four months. Ooh, we? I don't, I don't, I don't understand French. <laughs> Wait, breaking news. Squishy just posted this, and I think other people were posting this in the chat. Uh, yeah, breaking news. This Ooh. is from Nintendo. Everything. Pac-Man ninety nine announced for the Switch. Now that we that don't sounds have like fun. Now that we don't have Mario thirty five. Yeah. Now we got Pac-Man 99. It has been revealed that Pac-Man 99 is on its way to the Switch. Much like Tetris 99 and Super Mario Bros. 35, it's intended as a bonus for Switch Online members. Here's an overview of the game along with the trailer. It's an all new flavor it's an all new flavor of Pac-Man. Test your chomping chomps. Test your chomping chops in a 99 player Pac Royale. A nine, uh, 99 player online Pac-Man Battle Royale. 40 years after the classic Pac phenomenon rocked the gaming world, Pac-Man is back in a new 99 man Battle Royale. Get back in, in the maze and chase down the iconic ghosts. Who will be the last Pac-Man standing? Switch between eight different strategies and send Jammer Pac-Man to get in your opponent's way. Eat a power, eat a power pellets. Eat a power pellets. Mm-hmm. Eat a power pellet. So I'm just saying that again to make <laughs> sure you know I'm not stuttering. That's what's written. It, Eat a power pellet to turn the ghosts blue and make them vulnerable. Eat them to send Jammer Pac-Man to your opponents. The more ghosts you eat, the more jammers you'll send. Eat a ghost train for a huge comeback. Gain the upper hand by switching between eight different preset strategies. Speed up, send extra jammers, and more. Switching at the at just the right moment could give you an edge over your rivals that this is a i think a translation from japanese that's probably why, yeah. they don't they don't do plurals you just have to yeah. guess if there's a plural in the <laughs> sense uh make the game look like your favorite namco classics you can purchase downloadable custom themes based on Zevius. what is that game galaga i think i think we know it as Zebius or Zevius. uh galaga dig dug and more to change the look of the game there are 20 different classic themes in all plus they do more than change the graphics check out the sounds too whoa uh which classic namco tiles will work for you and then they have the japanese trailer here yeah um 
it's part of Nintendo Switch Online. Look at that. Uh, someone in the chat, uh, I think Lubick in the chat said, they killed Mario 35 just to give us Pac-Man 99. <laughs> Pathetic. They didn't kill Mario 35 to give us Pac-Man 99. No. Um, I think it's poor timing it's to give us timing. this immediately after they killed uh, Mario 35. They were probably waiting until Mario 35 was over to announce this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't think the death of Mario led to this directly. Yeah. I mean, I don't think this led to the death of Mario. Is what I, I think no, that they were always no. going to remove Mario 35, which is still a dumb yeah. move. But uh, we shouldn't discredit Pac-Man 99. No. Because... No, I think, yeah, I, I think uh, it, it'd be unfair to Pac-Man 99 yes. to blame it for the death of Mario 35. I don't think that it's related. I just think it's really poor timing to announce this immediately after we can't we can't be we can't be mad at drew carey for uh bob barker (laughs) retiring you know what i'm saying yes exactly um i'll give this a shot i mean i i liked tetris 99 for the two seconds that i played it um yeah i'm not i like tetris 99 more than i did mario 35 Ooh, i disagree but that's only because i i I love i i play a lot more mario than i play uh tetris so i was much better at mario 35 than i was at. Tetris. i just feel like tetris was a better fit for that style than mario was yeah i could see that yeah uh i'll i would love to give this a shot i'll try it out yeah um, it looks like it's launching tomorrow oh there you go april 7th yes probably at a weird time yeah Uh, Nader Potato says, "I love Drew. Fuck off." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was bad. Look, I didn't say it was bad. Carry. We just we just wanted people to be aware that it's not his fault. Bob Barker retired. Right. Bob Barker was like a thousand years old. He, he, it was his time to go. Right. And he chose to go. Robo- not like Alex Trebek, who didn't choose to go. Robo Jack says, I just downloaded it. What? Mm. My switch is over there and I don't know if it's charged. Uh it's not. I don't see a I don't see a like an eShop page for it. Oh, no, championship edition. You sure you got the right one? Oh, you can pre download it, they're saying. Okay. Um Anyway, that was an interesting bit of uh, yeah. of, a, of a sudden shock of news for us. Yeah. Uh, we got more people here. Screamy Yelly Gamer, thank you for the 12 months. Fuck ya, Bob. There, Here's to many more subs and hearing you scream, beep, boop, bop. And then another F word. Thank you, Screamy Yelly Gamer. I do curse a lot. Uh, Jin Jukebox, thank you for the five months. Hey, Wolf Bros, how's it going? Thanks for the great content as always. Thank you for supporting hey. us. Uh, all right. We got more sad news. Yes. Speaking of games preservation. <laughs> uh, wait, this is an interesting title. Analog yeah. pocket delayed and the Suez Canal boat may be partially to blame. I was thinking that boat was huge. And it was, a, they... it was a Japanese company, apparently. Yeah. So I was thinking, like, there's people, like, like I get sh- stuff shipped all the time. I might have something on that boat. You might yeah, have something I think on I that do boat too. <laughs> I've I've saw somewhere that like that boat costs like billions of dollars. Like companies lost billions of dollars because of that boat being stuck. Yeah, think about how small, like, like a like a little emulator, like one of these little emulators. Yeah. Think about how small that is. Think about how big. Apparently that boat was as big as the Empire State Building is. I believe it, dude. Shipping containers are huge. And it was pro- and that's it was as big as the Empire State Building is tall. So it was probably what like it taller like it was, you know, you stack the shipping containers really high. So it was probably wider than the Empire State Building is. Yeah. Anyway, uh just get Superman to move it out of the way. I saw a lot of memes that were like, "Dude, just <laughs> fucking blow it up." <laughs> 
<laughs> but think about how much money was on that boat. I know. If they just blew it up, it might have had an impact on the world economy. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, it did have an impact on the world economy. It would have had a bigger impact on the yes. world economy. Yes, yes. Losing all of that product might have yeah. had a big impact. Um, I'm sure Any that they. Who? I'm sure that they thought about moving stuff off of it at one point. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, uh, the analog pocket is delayed. Uh, big, big sad. Sage. If that's you were the, eagerly that's the waiting the, re the receipt of a modernized Game Boy like which you can play your ancient copy of Wario Land Four, you will unfortunately have to wait a little longer as the analog pocket has been delayed into October and the boat that got stuck in the Suez Canal might be partially responsible. Uh, Bob has left. This is the Will Show. Oh, Bob's <laughs> back. Hey. Hello. Hi. In an announcement today, Analog apologized for the delay, citing two very specific issues. The first was the ongoing shortage of electronic components, an issue that, that's been prevalent due to COVID-19 causing manufacturing delays globally and which is impacting in numerous industries not just games but the second reason cited was logistical issues that analog did not elaborate on in its post except to link to this forbes article specifically about how the ever given a a 1300 ton boat that blocked the suez canal for six days last week and blocked the passage of over uh, 370 ships during that time was impacting the global supply chains. Granted, many of the supply chains, it, many of the supply chain issues cited there uh, have been ongoing for some time. The Ever Given's blockage caused a tremendous delay with impacts that the article posts may ripple across the next four to eight months. That's what I call uh, it when I eat too much pizza. The Ever Given's yeah. blockage. <laughs> Given that the Ever Given's presence in the canal is probably at least partially responsible for everyone having to wait for their pockets. The analog pocket is a modern redesign of the classic handheld and looks an awful lot like a sleeker Game Boy. Its design was finalized last year, and when it launches, it will play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance games, and other games via uh, flock-on cartridges. It's been up for pre-order already, but it keeps selling out. Uh, though back in February, Analog said it would offer more opportunities in the future to pre-order. At least now it looks like there's more time to do so if you've missed out so far. Um, so this was supposed to come out this month. Yes. And they were really like adamant that they were going to hit the mark. Like, everybody yeah. was like, are you going to delay it? And they're like, we are not delaying it. This is happening. We're doing it. It's going to happen no matter what. And then turns out they couldn't do it. And I mean, yeah. I'm not trying to blame them. I'd rather, I mean, obviously delays are fine. But uh, first of all, highly anticipated. I want this thing so bad. This thing's awesome. Yeah. I can't wait for this thing. This is going to change the the, the friggin' uh, portable emulation game. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also going to change the Game Boy game in general because yes. uh, it's going to be so much easier to play all of this stuff. We're, we're talking about games preservation. Analog has this been- This is it. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is the friggin' best thing to come into our lives um yeah. but uh it's weird that it's supposed to come out this month and they are just now announcing that it's delayed like they were really trying yeah. not to delay it that means yeah so i'm just looking up what the original real estate was i think it just said april so i would imagine the end of the month also may um, Oh. It was announced on October 16th, 2019, with a release set for May 2021. I remember April. I mean, close enough. Uh, also of note, Will pre-ordered it. I did not. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, I'm, I'm a little surprised I was that. able to pre-order it. I think I just didn't wake up. Um, yeah. Yeah, and this is another thing. They said there was going to be plenty of stock, and... Uh, now we know that there's problems so yeah um um if only i remember what email i used to <laughs> that's good that could be a problem it. i gotta uh, i mean i don't want to email them yet what when has it been moved to to uh, october delayed in into yeah. october that's fine still this year mm -hmm. um so excited for it i think this thing's gonna be amazing yeah 
October, I think, is a great time for something like this to, to drop. That's when they dropped the the Mega SG, isn't it? Like later in the year. Yeah. Uh, all right. It was my Wolfden account. Wasn't Will supposed to order two but forgot, or was that something else? Uh, no, he wasn't supposed to. No, I, he. We did. Yeah. We planned this this way because I was hoping that I would get a review copy so that I wouldn't mm-hmm. buy three by accident. I wouldn't end up with three by accident. You know. Yeah. Um. And then they just never emailed me. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. I ordered the the pocket, the dock, and uh, a Game Gear cartridge adapter. And then after I had ordered it, you told me to also get a link cable. So I had to go back and order the link cable. Mm-hmm. So, I have, yeah, I ordered that. Oh, uh, I, I think you're thinking of when Will canceled the pre order. Yes. Will canceled my pre order for the, um, the, this. Wait, where is it? This. Yeah. Which I now have uh, two. Last Wolf Den Live, I I bought the game and watch. Uh, yeah, here's, here's mine. Uh, yeah, Will, I I pre ordered it on Best Buy and I use Will's Best Buy rewards situation. And he which thought, I yeah, because I had bought. My, I'm surprised it still has a charge. Because uh, I bought mine on Best Buy and I thought I had accidentally bought two. Right, so I canceled one. And it happened to be the one I was getting to make yeah. a video on. So I had to, I had to, somehow I saw your text and I, no, you called, you were, lo- you, called, were you were smart. Yeah. You were smart. I, yeah. You woke I, me this up. was important. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had to go to the Nintendo store. Not a big deal. Not as big of a deal yeah. as, as. Uh, yeah. Originally. And I mean, look, now you got two of them and <laughs> you know, honestly, I would have saved just some trouble because not the, not the best way to play Mario. No, might actually be not. the worst. It's possible it's the worst, yes. Um, I'm going to check the battery life on this thing. Is it still available on Amazon? Wow. I'm shocked that this thing still has battery life. Still got a decent amount, too. It is a solid console. It's just very weird. Yeah. Yo, you can still get it on Amazon. For for retail? $45.94. Four dollars cheaper than retail. Wow. Uh, and they have eighteen left in stock. Guys, I will drop a an, an affiliate link in the chat. There you go. Fight for it, nerds. <laughs> there are eighteen left. This is gonna be hot, hot, hot. I'll be interested to see if people actually buy it and that goes down. I'm gonna yeah. refresh it later. Um. So yeah, sad news about analog, but you know what? Take your time, make the best damn console you can, because I'm very excited for it, and I have high expectations. Yeah. Anyway, the the big deal about the analog for people who don't realize is they they use uh, FPGA chips, which will explain yeah. what the hell that is. Uh, FBH FPGA chips, short for field program. Actually, I don't know what it's short for. Bottom line is FPGA chips are programmable chips that you can use to replicate hardware field programmable like, array i think field programmable gate array i think is okay. well i think is what the g's for you're able to recreate a f- different hardware architecture on a system level so it's as close to the original hardware as humanly possible um so what analog has been able to do not just with this but you've seen in the past with the Mega SG, which is a Genesis emulator, um, the Super NT, which is a Super Nintendo emulator, and the NT Mini, which is an NES emulator, they're able to recreate those systems almost exactly to the to the original. It's it's as close to perfect as you can get, and they're updated for modern co- modern televisions, modern devices, so the games look and play better than ever. There's some games that just don't emulate well, or there's some like. There's things, there's consoles like the Retron, which is made by Hyperkin, mm-hmm. which is you put an actual cartridge in, but the system is software emulation. It takes the ROM off of the cartridge and yeah. it runs it through software. And the games, the games are mostly fine, uh, but yeah. there are some problems and it's not exactly the way it would play on the original hardware. So this is the closest to original hardware you can get. It's very much a boutique device. It's very expensive. Yes. I don't expect. Yes. 
I don't. It's for like diehards. I don't expect uh, everybody to go out and want an analog. Um, yeah, it's definitely a uh, really uh, specialized like piece of equipment. Yeah. Like if you're just getting into retro gaming, this is not the system for you. You should just um, buy a Game Boy. Yeah, it would probably be a lot easier. Um, but this is definitely for someone who takes their retro games seriously and want to be able to play their retro games in the best possible way. Right. Um, sorry, I was finding a tweet of the week and I think I found it. <laughs> uh, oh, you can... Sorry, I'm on Analog's website now. I just wanted to see what was in stock on their store. And you can still buy the Mega SG cartridge adapter set. That comes with the Game Gear cartridge adapter, my card cartridge adapter, and SG Mark III cartridge adapters. We would only care about the Game Gear cartridge adapter. Right. That's the thing. That's another thing with this console. You could plug the cartridges in, and it comes with adapters for all different portable consoles, which is freaking amazing. Yeah. We bought the Game Gear one, but you can also get it for the Neo Geo Pocket Color, the Atari Lynx, and the TurboGrafx-16. I'm very excited. And I'm kicking myself for not all... When we were at Long Island Retro Gaming Expo the last year we could go, I saw Sonic for the Neo Geo, and I almost bought it. And you told me not to because we don't own a Neo Geo. Did I and tell you not to? We could have had... I bought. Yes, you... I buy so many things that we don't have a way of playing. You told me not to because we don't have a Neo Geo Pocket Color. And now I could have had a cheap, uh, an easy way to play it. That doesn't sound and like. I... That doesn't sound very Bob. Well, how much was it? I know it? It, does. it wasn't. It wasn't expensive. And now when I look for it, it's like ridiculous for a Neo Geo Pocket Color game. So numb. Thank you for the four months. Thanks for the great content, Willie and Bobby. Thank you. And uh, Magic Toast, thank you for the subscription. Uh, let's move on quickly because we're yes. running out of time in the show. Uh, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga, officially delayed indefinitely. I didn't know that part. Yeah. Uh, here's the official tweet from... TT Games, formerly Traveler's Tales. All of us at TT Games are working hard to make Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga the biggest and best ever Lego game, but we're going to need more time to do it. We won't be able to make our intended spring release date, but we'll provide updated launch timing as soon as possible. This uh, is a game so that I used to put in all of my like uh, games that, we sold, that were announced and we know nothing about for the Switch because yeah. it was announced a long time ago. Yeah, and uh, this is a game I was actually really looking forward to because it was going to be the whole thing. All the all nine movies in the core Star Wars series that you can play from start to finish um, in, in Lego form. That I'm super pumped for it. Um, but now who the hell knows when, when that's going to come out. This was announced, I think, before... Um... The Rise of Skywalker was announced. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been going on for a, a long time. Yeah. Um. Oh, well. I haven't played any of these games. I play Well, I know I played one of them for like two seconds. I'm curious to see. Because because they've done, you know, Lego Star Wars, you know, they did, you know, prequel trilogy the original trilogy then there was the complete saga which was both in one and i know they revamped the games for that and then they did a dedicated episode seven lego star wars game and it was like there was a lot of content in it for just one movie and i'm i'm wondering if they're gonna put all of that in this game and if so are they gonna ramp up you know the amount of content for the last jedi and rise of skywalker you know i'm very i'm very interested to see what they do here so it feels come out soon. I feel like it's it's getting past uh the zeitgeist. Like they're already like they're missing the boat here. Like I, Skywalker I saga, think... we've been done that. Yeah, but I feel like Star Wars is so evergreen that like, you know, people will because 
Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy, came out well after even the prequels were done. And that and people loved that game when it came out. So I think I think it'll be fine. <laughs> On the note of more game preservation and the fact that yes. retro games are now a million dollars. Uh you thought Tron Bond was expensive. Yeah. A sealed copy of Super Mario Brothers just sold for six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. A near perfect copy of Super Mario Brothers for the NES is sold for six hundred and sixty thousand dollars at auction in what turned out to be a thirteen bidder contest. Uh fifty five five hundred and fifty thousand dollars went to the game's original owner. Uh, the copy was one of the earliest shrink-wrapped versions of the game you could buy in the U.S. Super Mario Brothers eventually had 11 different bo- box variants, according to Wata Games. Heritage Auctions, the firm that oversaw the sale, told Ars Technica it dates back to late 1986 and was reportedly bought as a Christmas gift and sat unopened in a desk drawer for the better part of four decades. I never thought anything about it, said the seller, who has to remain anonymous. Uh, this copy of Super Mario Brothers uh, sold for, sorry, the six hundred and sixty thousand dollars this copy of Super Mario Brothers sold for is crazy when you consider the Nintendo PlayStation, a one of a kind prototype representing a unique piece in gaming history, sold for three hundred and sixty thousand dollars at auction last year. More recently, someone paid one hundred fifty six thousand for a pristine copy of Super Mario Brothers three. It makes you wonder how much the owner would have walked away with. Had they simultaneously tried to cash it on the cash in on the NFT craze somehow? All right, we didn't need that last part. And no, we did not. <laughs> um, here's what's it's really hard to wrap your head around this. Uh, yeah. I think this is now the most expensive game ever sold. Yes, um, beating out uh, Nintendo Championship. Like the, yes, like that that thing which used to be the most expensive nes game um what's so hard to wrap your head around this is that this game is the is is i is the most is one of the most sold games of all time this is the highest sold game of all time uh Mm -hmm. it's like top five or something um the reason this particular one is so expensive is because uh number one it's from the very limited uh uh original US test market release. So yes. I don't know exactly what makes it that way, like how you can tell. I don't know exactly how you could tell that. I'm sure something about the box. Um Yeah. So uh there's a there's a link to the article by Wada Games who are basically like they're they're the company that like collects and grades these games they give it that number grade and they put it in that plastic shell um and they give it you know they they rate it and that determines how like you know well kept uh, it is it's similar to comic book grading it, it um, is it is the sticker that's the main thing it's not so much that it's sh- although they said it's shrink wrapped but in the test market they just stuck a sticker on the box to seal it yes so that that brings the price up from a couple hundred dollars to a couple hundred thousand dollars yeah because the game's so common but not with that sticker which is which is freaking insane also i will say if you have an old game that is sealed it is worth a lot of money yeah chances are it is it, it's worth a lot of money so if you have an old sealed game keep that shit sealed um it's probably worth a lot of money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a weird one because it's such a common game, but this is right. a very specific version of that common game. Yeah. It's it's a very specific version, and to reiterate, it's still in the box, and it's sealed in the box. It's, so, it's Schrodinger's cat. You don't know. Exactly yeah. well, what's in that? It could be it could be a brick. Because you don't the know. thing is, like when this game was released, people didn't think of this as like a potential collector's market. They saw it as a toy, and toys you take them out of the box and you play with them. Mm-hmm. That's what you did with them. There, there wasn't really this mentality like I'll keep it in the box 
you know, and save it for years down the road. This one particular person got extremely lucky. Um, so th- that means that the version of Super Mario Brothers that you probably have in your basement is not going to net you anywhere close to this. At most, it'll probably net you 15 bucks. <laughs> no, but uh, if you have a sealed copy of anything, look that shit up. Um, also of note, uh, one of the last most expensive NES games was um, this Super Mario 3, which is not a test market situation. No. But something about the box art is different on the earlier released versions. I think it's the placement of the bros. I think you are correct. What makes this particular copy so valuable is that it was a rare box design variant. The word bros is typically on the right, whereas it's on the left of the box and it covers a bit of Mario's glove. Yeah. The The earlier versions of that game have bros on the left, whereas later versions have bros on the right. Right. Uh, the earliest sealed game we have in our collection is Super Mario Brothers 3 for the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> yeah. Which is Super Mario Advanced 4? Yes. I also and, have a sealed yeah. copy of Typing of the Dead, but I don't know if it's like really sealed or if it's just somebody sealed it. Yeah. I have my reservation because I bought that at a used record store. Super no, no, Mario no. Brothers 3. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So I don't know like if they resealed it or not, but we should have that looked at because at the time I bought that, it was selling for like hundreds of dollars on Amazon. I also have a sealed copy of uh, All Stars for the Wii. Remember when they did that? Yes. That Was that worth anything? That was worth stuff for a while. Yeah. That was worth something for a while, and then they re-released it, and the, the price plummeted. Yeah. Uh, is this new? 53 bucks? I don't like that. That's sad. I don't think that's new, though. Uh, Super Super Mario Advance 4? Why is one f- loose for $300? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That's ridiculous. No, that don't is buy that. That is wrong because other people are selling it for fifteen dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's absurd. Uh, new in box, hundred twenty-eight dollars. Oh, that's not sealed. Four hundred dollars, not sealed. No, this is all over the place. Nobody knows what this freaking game is worth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so that's that. If you have a sealed copy of a game, keep that shit. Yeah. Um, I have two sealed boxes of Mario cereal. Well, that I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that one. Uh, next, we got Metroid Prime 2D fan project. I saw a lot of people tweeting images of this. I saw nobody talking about how to get it. I don't think they're telling you how to get it because they're afraid Nintendo's going to like shut it down. And you know, yeah, I don't blame them, honestly. Yeah. Um, so this is from Nintendo Life. It says Nintendo made the tough decision at the beginning of 2019 to restart the development of Metroid Prime 4 with the help of Retro Studios. Since then, and even before, there's been very little activity on the Metroid front. Fortunately, there is a passionate Metroid fan base and one talented group of developers known as Team SCU have been working hard on a 2D version of the GameCube hit Metroid Prime. While it was originally thought to be a joke, it's actually real. Uh, Why would it be funny? Why is that funny? I don't know. Uh, It's called Metroid Prime 2D with the other part of the name uh, removed for obvious reasons. And the first demo has just gone live. And then they said, hey, everyone, the time has finally come for the first public Prime 2D demo. When we first posted it, this post was the April Fool's Day page with the fake screenshots hiding the fact that it was actually a real demo. But 
<laughs> we can clear the joke away now that April 1st is over. Oh, there you go. It was posted on April 1st. Um, SCU further notes how the project is, quote, made by fans for the sole purpose of having fun. Oh, that, that, yeah, that's got to hold up in court. And says yeah. <laughs> all aspects of the demo are subject to change and may not necessarily reflect the final version. The demo itself gives players the opportunity to explore the Talon overworld, including the Artifact Temple and Chozo Ruins, and includes a range of abilities and power-ups, such as the Morph Ball. There's also 360-degree aiming, the ability to scan the environment, and apparently a little extra after the credits. And it looks freaking gorgeous. It does look very cool. I thought this was going to be like, you know another metroid prime another metroid 2 remake where they tried to emulate you know super metroid and uh metroid zero mission but this is it's similar but it has its own unique art style and feel to it and i I think that's that's very cool download the demo here they linked right to it oh there you go i'm gonna download it right now there you go you know what maybe i'll do a little post show and i'll play this there you go if you, if you want to stick I, uh, around. I know what it, it says, and you see it in the video, the 360 degree aiming. I think it's just like you move your mouse around to aim. Uh, I played a game like that. It's actually a, something similar. It was a, a Half-Life 2 game. I forgot what it was called. It was a Half-Life 2 fan game that was side-scrolling. Uh, and you, you shoot like that. It was... It takes a lot to get used to. Let me tell you. I've had, I've seen games that do a good job. Um, yeah. Uh, Mark of the Ninja does that. Yeah. Um, uh, there was like a like a Mario fan game that was Mario meets Portal that does that. <laughs> yeah. Um, wasn't uh, Shadow Complex like that? I've never played Shadow Complex. I think I think you use the right stick and you aim yeah. in, in all directions. That's what I thought when I when I heard this. I thought right stick would be for aiming, but yeah, it looks like it, he's probably using them. Actually, I can't tell. Um, but that looks really cool. And if you stick around, I'll play it after the show because it looks like it's only thirty minutes. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's cool. I'm not going to drop a link to it. You can go to the Nintendo Life article and click that little thing at the bottom if you want. Yeah. Or just Google Metro, uh, Google Prime 2D Demo. Uh, thank you, Bloody, for the eight months. Crossing fingers for that Wolf Den gets a Tanga sponsored vid. Feliz Navidad. Fellas, love yous. What is Tangas? Tanga. Is that a, I think that's a drink. Uh, Tenga is a Japanese brand of male masturbation aids by the company of the same name. Masturbation aids, personal lubricants, and other related products are sold under this brand. I could show this, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, they don't look like it. They're very discreet. Chris, what is this one? This one looks like a friggin' one of those... What are those things with the the water things with the rings in it? And you press the button and you try to get the rings on the hoop. For a minute there, it kind of looked like a saw trap, <laughs> like a trap Whoa. from the movie Saw. These are these are wacky looking. Yeah. Where do you put it? At the top. They're I, cheap. The reviews are not glowing. <laughs> no. All right. Uh. Get Tenga on the horn. We need a sponsorship. Yeah. I must I must see what this is all about. <laughs> anyway, uh Time Splitters 2 playable in home front. Alright, uh so do you want me to summarize this? Yes, please. Okay. So uh Home Front the Revolution game came out a few years ago. Absolute dog shit. But <laughs> it was notice notable because um, as an Easter egg, you could put it. You can play two levels from Time Splitters Two, because it was made by the company who originally made the Time Splitters series. They are now known as Dan Buster Studio. Apparently, they programmed in the entire Time Splitters Two game, the whole thing, 
Um, and they upgraded it with 4K visuals and whatnot. Um, however, the code to unlock the entire game has been lost. <laughs> so there is no way... And it was it was fully playable. You um, if the if you enter the code or like I don't know if it was a like a button combination or like actual piece of programming code. Um, but once you unlocked it, you could play the whole game start to finish. Um, but the the code, according to the developer, the code has been lost to time. I don't have the notebook with it anymore. I once gave it to a friend to leak in some Discord channel. And they called him a liar and banned his account. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> somebody's got somebody's got to go to those Discord uh, uh, logs. Yeah. And scroll back. Uh, fans like they they discovered the that the game that Time Splitters Two is in Homefront: The Revolution, um, but so far no one has figured out how to unlock it yet. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That seems so, like an important I mean, bit that somebody should have, uh, yeah, maybe written down somewhere else. <laughs> I, I feel like now that people know that this is a problem, they're gonna find a way to unlock Time Splitters Two uh, in Homefront because Time Splitters Two is one of the best games of its generation. It's one of the best first-person shooters of the PS2, GameCube, original Xbox era, made by the original GoldenEye team. So it. It feels a lot like Goldeneye, but it plays like a, a then current first person shooter. It was really creative, had a great sense of humor, fantastic multiplayer. Um, and that's a game you cannot currently play unless you track down a GameCube original Xbox or PlayStation 2. I would have bought Homefront the Revolution full price if I hadn't known you can unlock the full time splitters too. Uh, but it's a, but it's you could just play time splitters too. Yeah, but then I have to hook up my GameCube. True. Which I recently disconnected. Uh, last bit of news we have. Okay. Oh, that was it. That was it. Oh, yay! Oh well, so I we mean, do. we could. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, uh, you're thinking what I'm thinking, Will. I am thinking what you're thinking. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. It's a tweet of the week. Uh, this one uh, is from... I've seen this one. Uh, Emmett Watkins Jr. is on vacation. Uh, here it is. Oh. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. I see you. Oh. 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 <laughs> so it's the TikTok meme of all of the girls like in, in swimsuits. Yeah. And and this guy pulls out a switch, and they're like, oh, "Okay, all right." And then when he pulls out the Vita, they all go nuts, and that's funny. Yeah, everybody laugh. Okay, now we're gonna talk to you people. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast. This is the part of the show where we will finally answer you. And of course, for anybody watching at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them. We are done with everybody else. Yes. So going into the comments of last week's Wolf Den Live on the YouTube video, we have Keyholes. He says, I'm not fussed for a year of Zelda either, but let's just hope it goes better than Mario's year did. It can't go worse, right? Right? I'm nervous because Mario's year is over. They have murdered Mario. Yeah. And we don't know anything yet. So we're already four months into the year of Zelda with nothing about Zelda. And yeah, remember, the year of Mario didn't last the full year. <laughs> no, it lasted a few months and bled into the yeah. next year. So I'm already nervous about the year of Zelda. I mean, we know one thing. We know we're getting Skyward Sword. That's it. Yeah. The game nobody wanted. <laughs> Emily Van Engen says, question for Bob. How you doing? I'm good, Emily. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Christoph Skalski said, oh, big one. 
I'm sorry, guys. I listened to that. I listened to you a lot, but some things of what you said about cyberpunk are just not correct. He does. We we read from him a lot. <laughs> Granted, the game had and has problems, but your nitpicks are just factually incorrect. Pause. I think our nitpicks are opinions, but anyway, <laughs> uh, you absolutely know when you are doing a main quest versus the side quest. They specifically have different separate categories in the journal. All right. No, I want. I gotta pull out a. I gotta pull out a journal to know what quest I'm doing. You make yeah, me do more that, work. That that's what I was getting at because it, what I was saying is it, it automatically locks you into doing the main quest. To do mm -hmm. a side quest, you have to pull out your phone, look at your side quest, and then activate it in order to begin it. Compared to a game like Spider Man on PS4, the side quests are just on the map. But there are also parts of the game where the story will stop and Spider-Man will say, all right, I think I'm going to take a break and swing around the city for a little bit. And you swing around the city and it gives you a moment to breathe and do some side quests. It doesn't automatically lock you into doing the next mission immediately. Cyberpunk does that. And that can get very frustrating, especially when you don't have all your abilities that you need for later in the game, like getting a car on demand um and then he says uh wait where did it go uh you absolutely know when you're doing a main quest versus the side quest they specifically have different separate categories in the journal like in every other western rpg i don't play rpgs so and and i don't think you're right go on. I, I i want i need to be spoon-fed everything because i don't play rpgs so I probably got something about that wrong. Uh, but it wasn't good for me. I didn't like it. However it's set up, I don't like it. <laughs> Food and drinks serve a purpose. They're for regenerating your health and stamina. Can't you just go to sleep? Granted, there is no hunger meter. Like in many other Western RPGs like Skyrim, which also doesn't have a hunger meter. I know that you aren't big fans of RPGs either western or eastern but checking your journal and map is some kindergarten basic shit in <laughs> those kind of games so all right so yeah you use food and drinks to refill your health and your stamina but there's also med packs which when i was playing i was collecting by the fistful like i had more med packs than i did food i never ran out and stamina like you said you could just go to sleep they're, they're superfluous gameplay mechanics that are not necessary for this game. It's just extra shit that it didn't need. It, it, it reeks of somebody like needing something to do, so they just added food to the game. In in Monster Hunter, you eat food for like buffs before you go on a mission. So like you're supposed yeah. to eat before you go out and do stuff. I'd imagine they were trying to build. That's I think the point we were getting at when we were talking about the food situation is that they're clearly trying to build a system around it and gave up in the middle of it yeah um my point is the game is poorly designed not just not just technically broken but if it was if it worked <laughs> it would still not be a great game and part of it is because of stuff like like systems that just aren't finished yeah um but for me i just think that there's there's user experience issues like all over the place with with things that just don't make much sense and i i maintain that there's a good game in there somewhere it's just that it's buried under all the broken pieces and mm -hmm. there's a lot of broken pieces to sift through i think there's a good game in there if they gave it another three years but uh yeah they didn't uh gorg hat says my best dad hack Notice that a controller fits perfectly in your hands while you're holding your baby. Then offer to hold the baby while it naps. What? All right. I well, like I guess when the baby is napping, like you can hold, it can rest here. Oh, like I understand. Yeah, let me tell you, like that doesn't work because when you're moving like this, you're jostling the kid, and it will wake up. Um, but worst of all, I've tried sitting my daughter on my lap. And having the controller out front playing the game, and she just swats at the controller. Your 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 child played their first game on Sunday. Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, 
So uh, Will was checking out the RG three fifty one V. Yes. And his child decided, I want that. Yeah. And yoinked it. And what game was she playing, Will? Revenge of Shinobi. I don't know. So that was a that was a poor first game for this. I didn't expect being. it to be her first game. <laughs> um, and she just mashed buttons. She was just going yeah like this, which is fair because that's that you could that's a button mash. And then somehow she opened up Rocket Knight Adventure and, and yeah. just looked at the demo for that, and then kept going like I'm... this. She kept going like this. Yeah, like she was gonna <laughs> drop it on the ground. <laughs> I will say I'm very impressed because she will grab my Xbox controller and she just knows how to hold it. <laughs> yeah, like perfect. I think that's a testament to the design of Xbox controllers that they're that yeah. easy to use. Same thing with how easy it is to just buy three months of Apple TV. Yes. <laughs> this 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 person just bought apple tv on three separate devices within an hour well, all right so let me let me let me explain so my daughter grabbed our apple tv remote and hit the right combination of buttons to sign me up for a month of apple tv which charged my credit card five dollars okay fine whatever it's cute haha i was able to watch ted lasso which is a great show i highly recommend it if you have apple tv um then recently she hit the right combination of buttons to sign me up for three months of apple music which is not which i don't need i have spotify already um and i'm beginning to hate because i tried using it today like to run errands uh and it caused my phone to go haywire like siri just kept opening up for no reason so already not liking you apple music and then in our parents' house on Easter, she hit the right combination of buttons to almost buy Apple Arcade, but didn't because she needed to enter my mom's password. And, and before that, that 20 minutes, yeah, she oh, took yeah, my right. phone and got th three months of Apple uh, TV, but I don't think she actually yeah. finished the transaction. But that's how easy it is. We can do an experiment. I want every one of you to go on your Apple device and just mash shit until and see <laughs> if it buys something. Um, anyway, last thing from last week, we have Becca M who says, so happy these streams get uploaded to YouTube. Love you. Thank you, Becca. Love you too, Becca. Love you too, Becca. Um, now we're in the chat for you people for a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, somebody kept spamming uh, Xbox something or other in the chat kept spamming uh, when's my 8-bit do uh, hack going to be done with the arcade stick um, soon I've been waiting for like a like a week where nothing's going on and I've had so many videos to do recently so uh, potentially next week I need a while to do it obviously because I gotta do it but I have all of the stuff uh, supposedly it's easy you just drop it in I also didn't want to do it this week because I already did an 8 bit do video and I don't want to do another 8 bit do video right next to this 8 bit do video. Um anyway. Uh sushi sushi solar. They should just let Will's daughter unlock the code for the time splitters thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good idea. Yes. But then she'll be the only one who could play it and we'll never know. Yes. Ah. <laughs> Uh, sleeping virus is not big news at all but switch updated to 12.0.0 uh, weird thing is that the patch notes don't say anything big considering that this is a rollover from 11 to 12 all it does is fix a very rare gl glitch yeah I downloaded the update and uh, I don't I didn't think it did anything uh Will, what are you, are you going to read Geiger or not because of everything that's happening with Jeff Johns? Uh, it's not so much everything that's happening with Jeff Johns with regards to the whole Justice League reshoots fiasco. It's mostly because I have not enjoyed anything he's written in a very long time. Uh, he, it looks like he's tried to... His past few DC work, it's, it's like, I can write like Alan Moore and no, you can't. <laughs> so... I'm sorry, bro. I've I've lost faith in faith in you as a comic book writer, and apparently as a human being. 
Uh, so the patch notes for 12.0.0 say we fixed the issue with some save data backup feature where in rare cases, the automatic data of the automatic backup of save data is interrupted if a communication error occurs during completion of the save data backup process. And then it says for steps on how to check if the error is occurring or what to do, uh, whatever. All and right. Then, so it's just a patch basically. Oatmeal dome listed all thing it fixes a bug where automatic save files can be interrupted internally it appears a significant number of os components have been updated it ha if there's anything interesting i'll tweet about it none of these changes may be of any interest it's possible that they are minor bug fixes or just nintendo recompiling the components with a new switch sdk and not actually making any changes looks like uh it's a big it's a big nothing Maybe it'll give you a little more confidence on Nintendo Switch Online save data backups. Because right now I have zero confidence when I pick up my Switch Lite that it's going to uh, seamlessly move my save. <laughs> uh, AJ asked you, are you watching Invincible on Amazon? No, and everybody stop asking me about it. <laughs> I have never read Invincible, although well, I have nothing against it, and I have not yet watched the Invincible TV show. Um, so... I'm sure it's fine. I have also not seen the boys yet. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Nothing against the boys. I I would like to watch it. And I would like to watch Invincible one day, but I have not. It's only so much time in my life. Well, I did you... see Godzilla vs. Kong. That was pretty good. <laughs> uh, Fallen Kayaker says, will you play Republic Commando on stream after the podcast? No, I will play Prime 2D after the podcast, though. I need to take a minute to pee, get water, and order food. Mm -hmm. But uh, I will play Prime 2D after the podcast on twitch.tv slash wolfden. Thoughts on the new Space Jam movie trailer? <laughs> it looks weird. I don't like it at all. I, I like, I'm so disappointed and like it's weird to say because like it's space jam it's it's stupid to get upset about it but space jam was such a simple concept it was michael jordan and the looney tunes play basketball where did her yeah. boobs go will <laughs> look man lola bunny come on dude there. that was a sexual I, awakening I, for a lot of people not saying it was me but i mean i want to know why they felt the need to recast Lola Bunny with Zendaya. I didn't like, know that they did that. that I didn't know that they did that. You were wasting a lot of money <laughs> to get Zendaya to play Lola Bunny. Wasn't Michael Jordan a cartoon for like two seconds in the original Space Jam? No. my uh, He gained cartoon abilities at the end because he realized he's in Looney Tune land. So the physics of the real world don't necessarily apply so he could stretch his arm out. So he never actually was 2D. He never actually was 2D. He was, he was, I think pancaked at one point, but mm -hmm. no. Um, yeah, no, Michael Jordan just learned that the physics of the real world don't apply to him because he's in Looney Tune land now. So he can, you know, mold himself to the world around him, which was kind of clever. This game, this new space jam just looks overly complicated and yeah. like they're just throwing everything they can to try to do some weird thing that you know i guess they think will appeal to everyone but will appeal to no one also i feel like this is important to mention the reason why it was called space jam is because the antagonists of the original the monsters were from outer space why is this one called space jam then <laughs> It's true. There's no space at all. I mean, the Monstars are in it. The, but... the, the, they're the Goon Squad. Those are not the original oh, Monstars. And right. if you want to tell me it's because it takes place in cyberspace, I will personally come to your house and kick you. <laughs> What's worse is they changed the Space Jam website. They should have They should have made it look like a 90s website, but, yeah. but you know, redid it a little bit. Um, Yeah, I don't i don't i don't know how i feel about it i mean I i'm gonna watch it because it'll be on hbo max for free so but i'm not gonna enjoy myself do you know where in long island the retro game expo was uh it was at the cradle of aviation 
Yes. Uh, no monsters. I'm out. Did you guys see Pac-Man 99 announced one hour ago? Yes, we talked about it on the show. Yeah. Uh, people made us aware of the trailer. Old site is still there at the root backslash 1996. Oh, okay. Oh. Will any of you guys watch the new Mortal Kombat? Uh, probably not. I will. Not that uh, I not that I don't think it looks good. I think it looks good. I just don't. I never watch anything. I'm I know it got bad. delayed, so uh, it's got delayed a week. So, but I do want to watch it. I, I'm definitely going to try to. It, look, it looks very good. Well, what do you think about the evolution of the Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey movies? How do you think the new one is going to be? I definitely think the new one is going to be significantly better than the Suicide Squad movie we got. Uh, not just because I think James Gunn is a better director than David Ayer. David Ayer is a fine director. I just think he was the wrong choice for a Suicide Squad. Uh, I feel like they're, Warner Brothers and DC as a whole is in a better groove now with their movies than they were just a few years ago. Um, hopefully that continues and uh, we continue to get better movies. I think the the fact they're focusing less on continuity and a full expanded universe has been good for them. Because even though like they're sharing some actors and some um, continuity, they're not beholden to it like the way Marvel is. Um, so yeah, I think that's I think that's a good thing. Uh, Will, did you pick up the new Alien Marvel comic? No, uh, I've heard good things about it. I don't. I, I actually my pull list um, it got a lot bigger than it used to be in the past few years, and I don't really want to add another comic to that. But um, I'll check it out when it's collected, like when the first trade comes out. I think. Oh, Zonum, you guys excited for E3 2021? No, we should have no. talked about that. The, uh, apparently, oh, yeah. a bunch it's... of a bunch of people signed up for it. I like a, like Nintendo and Ubisoft and stuff are, are on yeah. board with a digital E3. I don't believe it. I don't <laughs> think Nintendo actually signed on. Yeah, I think it's a lie. Uh, I'm and all of a sudden I'm seeing a lot of uh, industry people saying i'm excited for this i'm so happy that we're getting a week of 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 announcements again fuck you <laughs> because you know what they did the last yeah. time they had an e3 you should be mad at e3 just because you didn't get doxxed but your friends did like fuck you we should all hate e3 you're not allowed to like e3 you should be canceled if you like e3 <laughs> <laughs> um I haven't seen Nintendo RT anything. Yeah, until Nintendo officially announces that they're there, I don't think that they're there. According to GameIndustry.biz, uh, E3 2021 will, will return in June in the digital form. It has been backed by Nintendo, Xbox, Capcom, Konami, Ubisoft, Take-Two, Warner Brothers, and Koch Media. Wait, 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 wait. I saw that EA and Xbox were not going to be there. Or maybe did I see that EA and PlayStation were not going to be there? There are noticeable absentees, including Sony, EA, Activision Blizzard, Sega, Bandai, Namco, and Square Enix. Yeah, so I guess Xbox... That's yeah. weird that Xbox is there. Yeah. That's weird. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Uh, I just... I still hope it doesn't happen. Fuck them. I don't want them to do anything. I want them to crash even, and burn. Even if it does happen, I, I don't... I just feel like, yeah, try as you might, I don't, the, the luster is gone. The luster is lost on E3 completely. You know, it, it's not, it's not this, you know, in, illuminous, captivating spectacle that it used to be. It's, it's a, it's a shitty trade show <laughs> run by a shitty organization um, that just has lost its relevance in recent years. Yeah. So I don't think it's worth um, having just because people want one week of announcements. 
No. I think that it's better off getting rid of it entirely, even if all the announcements are spread out. It's really not yeah. that big of a deal if the announcements are spread out. Like, you'll get over it. Yeah. <laughs> They'll leak Bob's address and send, we'll send him Tangus. <laughs> I do not, please. Yeah. Uh... Can I mail you a Game Boy Advance SP for you to sign and send back? No. But if you see me at a convention, I will gladly sign whatever you want. I looked over at uh, where I kept the GBA SP because I got a stand for it. Um, and the stand has been just empty and lonely since. Oh, yeah. <laughs> since I took it. Took it to the Sorry about it. I had some contact you know, to make, Will. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm not mad or anything. I just, I just think it's funny. It's just, I got my Game Boy Color, uh, my Game Boy Pocket. And just the, the the SP is just like sad and lonely. Also of note, that's Game Boy Advance SP stolen from my old bass player. <laughs> yes. It is not our Game Boy Advance SP. Um, anyway, I think we're done. Yes. Thank you all. Oh, wait, hold on. What did you what did E3 do to make you hate it so much? Somebody in the chat posted a video that I made about it. Basically, yeah. uh E3 became more and more of a pain in the ass to attend, more and more of a pain in the ass to cover. Um they, they was, it's not set up properly to have so many people at it. Um so it's basically a shit show. And also they gave out everybody's phone, all of the media people's phone numbers and addresses <laughs> to to uh, to the public. And we all got harassed. So and they did nothing about it. So that's why fuck them. They basically harassed us the whole time we were there. And then and then we got harassed more after we left. Yeah. <laughs> so it it's just a terrible it was a terrible experience all around. I hope that the convention never comes back because they're showing no signs of wanting to fix the problems that they had in the past. Long story short. Um, anyway, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. And thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put an archive version of it up over on our YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast, so you can go and watch it on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice but no matter where you get your wolf den podcast from make sure you subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms i should have said this before but don't go anywhere if you're watching this on twitch because i am going to play prime 2d and if you're here watch it on youtube or your podcast service of choice uh there'll hopefully be a clip video on wolf den clips of me playing prime 2d uh, just so you could uh, see what it's like if you don't want to download it yourself. Um, so stay here. I, I'm going to put up the buy screen and I'm going to be right back. Uh, yeah. But don't go anywhere. I'll play some Prime 2D for you. But thank you for being here and thank you for watching. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.